Hello! Project 3. We are going to experiment with abstraction using non-traditional materials like using plastic wrap. Bubble wrap is kind of the same effect. Uh, sand, cheesecloth, tissue paper. We're going to use whatever paints you like for papers for the four different experiments. This is a 7.5 by 11 and palette, brushes, and water. If you have spray bottle, it will be easier. So let's begin the first experiment. You can use saran wrap and if you like to have some kind of texture other than kind of wrinkly texture, you can have bubble wrap. You can have the small bubble wrap like this one or this one's big bubble if you have any. If you don't, you can just use saran wrap. I switched the paper because that other paper was really bad. It was very old. Anyway, this is supposed to work. It's kind of similar size with the paper so I can play with wet on wet. Have the color run be free on the paper. And have enough pigment and enough water and kind of dripping the colors and you gotta work really quickly I'm gonna add more red add enough color enough water and then move quickly and to contrast that I'll have a little bit of blue darker and just splashed it splash it darkest blue a little bit of red splash let's get a little bit of saturation on the red okay. here's the surround wrap you can wrinkle the surround wrap on the paper and That crease is going to create that texture. That color and the water goes in between the crease. So it's important to have plastic wrap wrinkles. If you want to have a little bit of other textures, different textures. Okay, let it dry. I'm gonna peel them off tomorrow. I'm gonna place it on the cardboard. Okay. okay off. Another thing you can do is to have something on top of this to weigh it down. Okay, I'll leave it there. Next one. All right, I'll do the cheesecloth you can get at grocery store. Once you use it, you can always wash it and reuse it. Before start, you wanna make sure what you want to put down. And then I like making a lot of uneven holes and kind of break that patterns a little bit. Yeah. Place it down with this one. You can wet the paper and then do the paint first, but it might be easier to design this first and wet the paper and then place the color. Make some interesting abstract holes, shapes, lines, movement. Wet the paper. And done. 
but you can't really even it up so you can just let it sink uh, make sure all the uh, thicker cheesecloth is down if not you can spray and then make sure the cloth is all wet that's great that's good then have color this time I'll do more of a gradation more red and purple blue so it's uh, have um, harmony next color uh, on the color wheel red to purple to blue that gives nice harmony I'm gonna change the water first okay so beginning with red so mixing those three type of red to give a variation so what I'm doing is to giving the paper and also the cloth color. The cheesecloth is going to absorb the color and water and create lighter area when you peel this off. It's very pretty details. Sometimes the cloth absorb the colors more than the other area on the paper and then become very dark saturated color where the cloth is. So either way, um, have some textures shows negatively or positively. All right, I'm gonna move that color a little bit to purple. And then you can choose whatever color you like. Can add a little bit of blue to the purple. It's a cooler color. Okay. And let that sit on the cardboard. And then peel this off tomorrow. And just to give this up. Uh, other one, the weight, I'll just put it over it. That kind of press the bottom one a little bit. All right, tissue paper. You can cut the tissue in different shape. You can use scissors. I just uh, use my hand, rip it. Rip it in different shape. But you can use scissors and get more like a geometric shape, triangles, or any shapes. All right, so that's enough paper. And then I don't know how I'm gonna place it yet, but I'm gonna first wet the paper. And then place some colors. I'm gonna just dump this. There you go. And just run it down a little bit. Ooh, that's pretty. And I'm gonna wipe it off. And I'll use different colors, maybe like a green. See how that color comes. I'm gonna drip it. I'll drip it in the other way. So try to kind of color the paper and Splash, little, splash, little, splash, splash. It is uh, abstract, so don't worry about making images yet. Just to enjoy the color combinations. Then I'm gonna place them down anywhere. That's gonna lift color, takes the water and color out of it and um, what I can do is to put some other color on top and the color will sink it in to that section a skinny one and one, two, three, four, five is better than four so one more right here that overlaps a little bit okay so I'm going to go back and then maybe add more colors and see if that takes in, sink it in to the paper. This is where the tissue paper is. So I'm 
So we'll see how that turns out. Definitely where that tissue paper is going to have that shape and see if that color sinks in. Alright, so wait until it dries. Last one is the most messy technique using sand. This is a craft store sand for sand painting, sand art, white or you can just go to any type of place that has sand like beach or sand box at the playground this is very fine but you can have more coarse sand if you like for this it starts we start with a dry and then just to have a little bit if it's too much the color won't go down so i'm gonna just sprinkle a little bit of sand and then move that sand around with the water. Okay, that's quite enough. So in this case, you do need a water bottle and then spray the sand till that paper and sand are soaked, soaking wet. All right, so you can see the sand there's some dry sand, but the water, if you tilt back and forth, you can create some type of pretty design. And where the sand remains, like here, the color won't sink in. Color, so it probably when you remove the sand, it would be white of the paper, but it's okay to have white. There are plenty of exposed area, so I can just drop some colors and I can still move it around when color and the moisture makes paddle you kind of tilt it and then run it so that's how it gets really messy now dropping color is going to appear where that exposed area but if you put color on top of um, sand the color might sink into that paper but it's not as strong color as the color drops on that um, directly to the paper so I'm gonna do um, dark, like a purple, blue, and brown maybe. Some type of cool color combination I like to do. So have enough saturation and moisture. The green, green came in. Oh well, Just some dark color, neutral color. Since brown is um, kind of family of like orange, I'm gonna add orange to give little highlights on uh, brown. And then orange is a contrasting color with a blue. So hopefully that color combination has nice harmony. It's a lot of pigment. But when you take off the sand, it usually um, color is hard to sink it into the on top of uh, sand. Hopefully that gives enough. You can leave it like that. I have another cardboard, but I'm sure it's gonna make a mess transferring but it dries a little quicker on the cardboard and then you can work on something else on the table if you move this so I'm gonna move this to the board and I'll set this up with the rest of that abstraction okay so today that's all we need to do and then tomorrow when everything is dry i can reveal the result the textures we made with the non-traditional material all right i'll see you tomorrow